Ever since the mass firing of WWE superstars, a lot of guys have been showing up in Impact Wrestling. And with Slammiversary only happening a week ago, Impact Wrestling's probably one of the hottest promotions in the world to watch right now. With a super underrated roster and a TV production that I feel like a lot of people need to be watching, because it's actually pretty good. A lot of fans, including myself, are really getting to the idea of watching Impact Wrestling every single Tuesday on Access. And if we're going to watch it, I think we should know who's on a television screen. So that's what I want to talk about today. I try to avoid putting XWV guys that just recently got released and like everyone already knows already and kind of leave the list of only Impact Wrestling guys aside for like one person. So thank you to these people who commented on the last video. We going up like a thousand. I'm a flesh just like a muscle man mouth. Uh. And if you want to be shouted out in the next video, all you have to do in the comments down below is um, comment moose. I like Moose, so Moose. Put that in the comments down below. These are 10 Impact Wrestling stars that you need to watch. Number 10, Eddie Edwards. I don't think there's a better way to start off than talking about the world champion of the promotion. So, Eddie Edwards, he was born right outside of Boston, Massachusetts, and he's a decorated Impact Wrestler, being the eighth Triple Crown champion of the promotion, with five tag team reigns, two X Division, and now a two-time world champion. He's also a former world champion of Ring of Honor and Pro Wrestling Noah. He also has the best shining wizard in the game right now that he calls the Boston Knee Party, which, it's just the best name. But last week, depending on when you're watching the video, he actually announced he's doing an open challenge for the Impact World Championship, much like a Cody does with a TNT title or John Cena did with the US Championship. But for him to have an open challenge for the World Championship of the company, it seems like we're gonna get some solid World Championship matches every single week on Impact. Number nine, Suzy or Sue Young. Suzy or Sue Young has a fiend-like character of having a split personality trait. Sue Young, the undead bride, is dead, like, Dead, dead. Hung by Havoc, she's dead and gone. Like, she's done for, all right? Gone. Susie came to Impact and somehow, this is like creepier than Sue Young. I don't know how she does it, but she's doing a great job. An almost happy but demented character that she's playing now, I really don't know how to describe it. It's actually just something that you need to just watch for yourself. If you're a fan of spooky wrestling or you're a fan of baby faces, then Susie is your wrestler for you. Number eight, Ace Austin. He kind of looks like a magician with a TikTok account. Come on now. Like he got like the half shaved head with the other side being dyed purple. Like what? <laughs> huh? If wrestling doesn't work out for him, there's a perfect spot for him in the hype house. Somehow, some way, Ace made what looks like an 80s character have the finesse of a 2020 heel pro wrestler. A surefire fit for the X Division, even holding the title for 171 days. He began feuding with the world champion at the time, Tessa Blanchard, and it was probably like a good transition for him to be facing her, rather than like getting mauled by some big dude like Brian Cage or something. And he even featured in the Slammiversary main event for the world championship. It's only a matter of time till Ace is, well, the ace of Impact Wrestling because the dude has the potential to be the top guy. Number seven, Tasha Steeles. Within three Three years, Steels has been a part of three major promotions being ROH, NWA, and now Impact Wrestling. Due to the pandemic, it seems the reason she signed with Impact was mainly because, well, they were the only ones running a TV show. And smart by her by doing that because now you kept yourself relevant during this global pandemic where all we want is to watch wrestling. With those years under her belt, she's the current Chaotic Women's Champion, a title previously held by Sasha Banks. But when she made her Impact debut, she was unsuccessful against Kylie Ray, but quickly formed an alliance with Kiara Hogan. With the Knockouts Tag Team Division, Probably coming back very soon. They keep hinting at it at commentary. It's a shoe in that her and Kira Hogan are she wants to be the first champions of this new era of Impact Wrestling. Number six, The North. Ethan Page and Josh Alexander, in my opinion, are the best Impact tag team of all time. It's just a fact. With the cocky arrogance of Paige and that stern kicker in Alexander, they play to each other's strengths and weaknesses perfectly. These two Canadian all-stars, uh, yeah, they're from Canada, the North, get it? That's the name of the team. They're a couple of former PWG tag team champions and were separately the AAW world champion. The walking weapon and all ego have defended their titles against all comers, only recently losing them to Motor City Machine Gun, but I wouldn't be too surprised if they regain their championships one day. Number five, Jordan Grace. The former Knockouts champion is known for her strength and agility, that could honestly put her in the same conversation as Beth Phoenix or China. Some fans may know her from Twitter when she exposes creepy guys in her DMs, and honestly, those are hilarious to read, but also really weird in general. Like, like people, please stop DMing wrestlers with weird stuff. Stop it. They don't want you. <laughs> and she's also the illegitimate daughter of Scott Steiner. And my personal feelings about her, I think if Impact ever has another female world champion, I think Jordan Grace is your best bet. She could honestly go with any other dude, because, like, she's probably stronger than 
some of them. Number four, Chris Bay. Y'all seen him on my channel a couple of times. So he's a current X Division champion, the first ever finesse division champion. And the man's ushering in a new era of the X Division, a division that's been the best equipped tool of the promotion, much like how WCW was with their Cruiserweight division. In a few years from now, I guarantee we're gonna put his name in the same conversation as all the great X Division legends. With a cocky persona and a subtle swag of like a, I don't know, like a Polo G or Roddy Rich. Some weird combination of the two. He's like a middle child of that. Middle child, J. Cole. Nah, a little more cockier than J. Cole. J. Cole kind of humble. Wait, humble. Kendrick, he could be like Ken Nah. He has all the potential in the world to be in the same conversation as X Division greats, Amazing Red, Low Key, or even Christopher Daniels. He's very lucky that he can showcase his abilities in a lot of different dream match scenarios with RVD or TJP. And also classic with anyone that wants to get a shot for the X Division Championship. Ten years ago, he was unboxing the TNA Heavyweight title on YouTube. And only a decade later, he's holding one of the same titles that a lot of those TNA World Champions once held. Speaking into existence. It might just happen if you work hard enough. Number three, Deanna Perrazzo. No one knows what a virtuosa is, and I don't even know how to spell it. But somehow, some way, Deanna took that persona and turned it into probably the most interesting thing to me in Impact Wrestling. During her time in the WWE, her best highlights were honestly just pretty much having a back and forth match against Asuka that you knew she was gonna lose, and being called James Ellsworth by Alexa Bliss. But ever since her very recent arrival to Impact, she's probably made the biggest seismic shift on the card, going from a jobber status to literally, probably, guarantee, the best thing on the card. In a short time span, Diana hasn't just shown that she's sharply calculated in the ring, but she carries that same elegance to her promos. Not letting the title make her, but she makes the championship. Number two, Moose. Workhorse doesn't just mean that you're very good in the ring and you can go 30 minutes. Workhorse also means that you can take any storyline and make it probably the most interesting thing in the company. The now self-claimed TNA World Champion in an era where that abbreviation means as much as WCW or ECW. Dead. Moose took advantage of the love of nostalgia pro wrestling and found a way to get himself over big time. Now feuding with anyone that worked on her Dixie Carter, he's been putting on some pretty entertaining matches and segments featuring Rhino or Hernandez or Tommy Dreamer. Especially during a time frame when there was no world champion, Moose pretty much made a strap that was irrelevant feel like the most important thing in the company. Too far missed the eye to realize he's not the actual champion, Moose holds himself to the same standard of a Kurt Angle or a Jeff Jarrett, and honestly, maybe even closer to a Bruno San Martino or a Ric Flair. He really, really thinks he's that champ. He really, really thinks he's that dude. And it's pretty funny to watch. Number one, Kylie Ray. Without winning a title or being in a really major storyline, Kylie Ray has been the biggest acquisition of Impact Wrestling in 2020. And that's saying a lot because they've hired a lot of people. She just has that big star feel while also being the most relatable character for any guy or girl watching her. She's just someone who's happy to be there, wants to make friends, but she ain't playing games if you finna make some noise, you feel? Like she real life taking your head off your shoulders. That super kick looks real. Regardless of what promotion she's worked for in the past, being a big star on a women's independent scene, tour in Japan, what would have been a NXT recruit, or AEW's top women's star, she has an undeniable amount of fan support and is truly the top star of the company, even if you haven't realized it yet. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much the video. If you really enjoyed in the comments down below, I want you to comment Moose and also uh, who's your favorite current wrestler for Impact Wrestling. Thank you guys for watching the video. If you really enjoyed it, make sure to like, comment, share, and always subscribe. And we outie. Going up like a thousand. I'm a flesh just like a muscle man Malcolm. Uh, we going up like a thousand. I'm a flesh just like a muscle man Malcolm. Uh, when it just like one two three. If you like the channel, this will squeeze. If you like the channel, this will squeeze. If you like the channel, this will squeeze.